Are eye bags and fat deposits the same thing? Are eye bags and fat deposits the same thing? I've seen three doctors. First doctor says it's fat deposits and I need lower eyelid surgery. Second doctor tells me eyelid surgery is no good because later on I will have a hollow look. Third doctor tells me I am a good candidate for radius. I have no idea what to do. Every surgeon had a different solution. I prefer not to have eyelid surgery. If eyelid surgery is my solution, then I'll definitely go with that. Don't want to spend that kind of money if it's not necessary. Thank you for your question. You're asking if eye bags and fat deposits are the same thing, and you have experienced going to three doctors for the um, under eye bags and getting three different opinions. So let's get down to just the basic anatomy issues and also an understanding of some of the basis for the conflicting recommendations you've been getting. So looking at your photos without these other opinions from colleagues, I, it's very straightforward that you have something called lower eyelid fat prolapse. Lower eye, eyelid fat prolapse means that the fat pockets normally around your eyes push forward on MRI studies have been shown to actually increase in volume and become hernias. We refer to it as herniated fat. So this fat is pushing forward and creating these bags under the eyes. Now as far as solutions are concerned, the concerns about how to do this and what the consequences are is becoming more confusing these days because there are certainly a lot of options being suggested by different doctors as treatments for under eye bags. There are people like myself who tend to advocate more definitive solutions like surgery in a case like yours typically we would do something called a transconjunctival blepharoplasty. This is a technique where I work on the fat pockets from the inside of the eyelids performed under local anesthesia with light sedation and essentially reduce and reposition as is appropriate so it looks like you never had the fat pockets there. Now that's a, 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 that's a good way of starting because it's addressing the true anatomic issue. So the concern about hollowing becomes an issue. Well, hollowing is very often perceived when someone's eyelids are pulled downward. And that is really what scares a lot of people. Is that you, what that situation is called is lower eyelid retraction. We have a lot of experience in our practice because as a specialist in this area, I see patients from around the world to correct lower eyelid retraction and to then help them look like they aren't as hollow. There are many different methods. There's an external approach called a transcutaneous approach. There's the internal approach called a transconjunctival approach. And then there are different things you can do in terms of the support structures of the lower eyelid. And this makes it challenging for people to find the right doctor to help them with this problem because there are a lot of people offering their version of the solution. So I think that you have less to worry about in terms of over hollowing in that particular area. Something that does happen with facial aging is volume loss in the cheek area. So a lot of times we, and we do our consultations, we point out to our patients that you may be focused on the bags, but you have to notice that below the bags, the cheek is very flat. And so sometimes people think, why don't I look that much better? They look better, but they feel like they can still look like they're more energetic. And it's because they've lost volume in their cheek. So there's a solution for that, an option such as radius, as you refer to in the th with the third doctor. And the point is, is that whether it's radius, restylin, fat, or any other, or, or cheek implant, you can do something to improve volume in the cheek but I would respectfully disagree that you would put so much volume to camouflage 
the fat pockets that are pushing forward are herniated forward. It's way too much. We have patients who come to us all the time who got over puffed and they look to they look unrecognizable and we end up using ways to such as uh, for a hyaluronic acid filler we'll use an enzyme called hyaluronidase to actually dissolve the um, the filler so that they actually look like themselves and then we see oh yeah they do have fat pockets under here and we see why they got so much filler but very often it just looks too unnatural when it's overdone. It can be done beautifully and subtly in the right candidate, but when done with excess, it looks like you know someone is, has an allergic reaction. So, from my perspective, a lower eyelid blepharoplasty performed in a way with an understanding of the outcome, as we get, that is about communication, will probably be the best direction for you because you can't no matter what the puffy bags are a very dominant feature on the face and no matter what you do to the rest of the face the bags under the eyes are there everybody thinks you're tired and you're sad so with that being said I think you need to try to narrow your decision and try to figure out if one of the three doctors that you met with who chose who's recommending the surgical option kind of resonates with you and you feel comfortable otherwise meet with additional doctors but I think that from my perspective as a experienced 20-year cosmetic oculofacial plastic surgeon in practice that transconjunctival blepharoplasty most likely will be the starting point for you to at least address the dominant feature on your face so I hope that was helpful I wish you the best of luck and thank you for your question